Welcome to another Feature Fridays. Uh, my name is Guy Bartram, Director of Product Marketing in our Cloud Infrastructure Business Group. And today again, I'm joined by Jörg. Jörg, do you want to introduce yourself? Uh, sure, yeah. Hey, my name is Jörg Lev. I'm a Technical Product Manager in VMware's Cloud Services Business Unit. And Jörg, today we're here to talk about something uh, pretty cool, actually. And it's it's always been something that's been kind of requested uh, by service providers and by tenants. Um, and this is a, uh, a VRA um, uh, adapter for VCD, right? Yeah, that's correct. So with the latest release of Virilize Automation or the Virilize Suite um, 8.6, mm -hmm. which was released just a few weeks ago mid um, October, um, they added out of the box an endpoint for Cloud Director in Virilize Automation. So that means, and we will see that later in the demo, that you can use your Cloud Director managed org VDC as an endpoint in Virilize Automation. So I guess this is this is a use case for tenants and for providers. So tenants obviously can, if they've got VRA today, you know, mostly on-prem, they can then now configure their VRA to point to a VCD instance, whether that's a cloud provider managed instance or something else. Um, but also for a service provider to provide that layer of service management to their operational teams, perhaps, um, in terms yeah, of that's, onboarding customers. Mm -hmm, yeah, that's possible as well. So in... Mm -hmm. We realize automation while well, there's a lot of um, mechanisms there for approval processes, for service catalogs that can be useful for a service provider. And they, they can use that um, adapter and the integration with VCD to offer either um, we realize automation as uh, managed services to their tenants, or even just use it internally for their own operation team and then use the um, yeah, service catalog in VRA for data. Um, their own day-to-day -day operations. And what are the kind of, um, <clears throat> when we're talking about VRA driving something into VCD, we're talking about VRA basically providing a blueprint uh, for a VCD VM perhaps, or a V app. Um, we're not necessarily going up to the level above that where it'd be like a blueprint mm -hmm. for an ORC VDC, are we? That's all got to be there and configured and working. Yeah, that, that's correct. So. Um, Let's first start with what the current integration does not do. <laughs> so it does <laughs> not. Um, <laughs> yeah, it does not change anything in the multi-tenancy or business group separation uh, capabilities in VRealize Automation, and it does not change anything in the way Cloud Director carves up the resources into Org VDCs. So it's literally uh, VRA and the blueprints being able to consume Cloud Director resources to manage, deploy and manage virtual machine objects. Okay, so it's using the VCD API to, to make mm -hmm. those calls? Yeah, okay. that's correct. It's using the, uh, the public VCD API in tenant context. And that's very important for two reasons. First of all, the fact that it's using the public APIs means that um, as a service provider, you don't have to do any special configuration on VCD side. It just okay. works out of the box with the um, organization or tenant access to uh, VCD. And then that's the second aspect since it works on a um, tenant in tenant context in um, Cloud Director that allows uh, even on-prem VRA customers to connect to their org VDCs without the service provider even yeah, have to know about it. It just acts as a, another API client in um, Cloud Director to deploy and manage virtual machines. Okay. And um, yeah, those, those are two really good points. And what version of VCD is supported with this adapter? Um, it is backwards compatible to 10.2, any 10.2 yep. or later um, releases. Right. Okay, that's cool. And for so, VRA, you need the latest version 8.6 because it uses some uh, endpoint extensibility APIs, which are only available in 8.6. And um, well, that's the other big benefits or two big benefits. Um, it comes out of the box. So even as a VRA customer, you don't have anything to install special additional to VRA. It just works out of the box. And um, it comes with the um, VRA advanced license. So it's available for pretty much all the uh, VRA customers and allows them to connect to their org VDC um, while when they want to manage other hyperscaler endpoints in a comparable way, they would need the enterprise license of VRA. Okay. And there has been in the past previous integrations between VRA and VCD, um, most haven't been great because they've been trying to, um, and correct me if I'm wrong here, but they've been trying to 
create a synchronization between two mm -hmm. kind of databases, which has caused huge amounts of issues um, yeah. and is not sustainable at volume at scale. Mm -hmm. uh, this one is different because this one is, like you say, it's just using that tenant API to kind of push a request or pull information back about mm -hmm. a, 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 um, some architecture. Yeah, that, that's correct as well. So there is no kind of um, alignment or synchronization of the tenancy concepts in VRA with the tenant concepts in VCD. And that is intentionally because we really want to work uh, VRA on a single tenant endpoint in uh, in Cloud Director, so that a tenant user they can use all the different business groups and the allocations and the entitlements of the services and the blueprints and all these approval processes and the power that VRA brings um, to the table from a consumer perspective, and they can use that to consume the Org VDC resources they they get from a VCPP provider. Now tell me, uh, yeah, that makes absolute sense. So in the tenant case, a, a single tenant, uh, uh, you know, from their premise to a, a VCD uh, or VDC, that makes absolute sense. You're limited by the bounds of what you can create within the API within that org VDC and the blueprints within VRA for the, for the plugin, for the adapter. Um, if I was a service provider admin though, and I wanted to deliver, you know, more than just, um, the stuff within the org VDC more than via VMs, via apps like firewalls and the other stuff. Would this be a way I could control the service management around doing that? Or is that something that's probably better done with Terraform or some other kind of capability with VRA? Yeah, with that, well, we, we do have um, all these different options and you have the flexibility mm. as a service provider partner to um, use these different tools. Um, VRA has a lot of automation and extensibility itself. A lot is um, based on Virilize Orchestrator, obviously, but it also has a powerful integration with um, Terraform for the blueprints. And now with the acquisition of um, SaltStack a uh, couple of months back, there's a lot of uh, functionality when it comes to um, configuration management of the um, deployments uh, through VRA. And that is something, if you want to offer that as a um, service provider, that's likely rather in the uh, area of a managed service where you have a single instance of VRA pointing to the Org VDC and perhaps to some dedicated private cloud offering. Um, um, for a single tenant, and then the tenant can use the VRA uh, yeah, functionality to consume these resources or the services through the service broker and service catalog in VRA. Right, right. Okay, well, um, should we have a, a look around it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So um, let me switch over to the demo environment here. And I'm starting here with the view that we hopefully all know in the tenant portal in um, Cloud Director, just to show you what's there and how the, the different components and objects that you have in Cloud Director then uh, will be used and translated into or mapped to um, resources in Virilize Automation. So I am logged in as an organization administrator to uh, Cloud Director where I have um, three different org VDCs available. Mm -hmm. And then one org VDC that we are going to use um, for the VRA integration. Um, you can see that there are already a bunch of virtual machines running that I um, deployed just natively through the VCD portal. Um, I also have a few networks, um, org VDC networks that are um, some uh, direct networks, some are routed with the um, nice powerful uh, VCD network functionality. Yeah. There's also um, two edges that are rolled out to connect these org VDC networks to the outside world. And I have um, uh, access to some storage policies that the provider well, configured for me so that the org VDC can consume um, or the VMs can consume these um, storage resources in the shared cloud offering. Yep. Okay. Um, I also have, that's important for um, later, we also have some uh, catalogs available in here and a lot of yeah vapp templates that have been configured either by a subscribed catalog or me as a um, tenant user in cloud director i can um, create my own catalog items and uh, catalogs and upload them to the catalog and deploy new stuff from there yeah with that um that's all native out of the box functionality in vcd um nothing special to uh, configure here as mentioned now let's switch over to VRealize Automation. So here I'm logged in as an, well, cloud administrator or service architect role in VRealize Automation. And that VRA instances, for example, could be an on-prem 
um, instance of VRA. Okay. And let's start the like the consumer experience. So I can use the um, service broker and realize automation to request new services. And in these new services, there is now, um, in my example, one service available for an Ubuntu virtual machine. And then I can, yeah, just follow the out of the box VRA functionality to um, deploy a new, uh, to, to, yeah, do a new request um, for a new virtual mach machine. And based on the blueprint that's behind the service request, um, which we will see in a second, then um, you can yeah, define all these different information and input forms that are needed for the request. Now that deployment starts and that's all native well, VRA functionality based on the uh, blueprint that figures out which network resources to use and then eventually will um, trigger the deployment of a VApp template into a VM in the OrgVDC in uh, Cloud Director. So we can see the different steps running here. And if we switch back to the Cloud Director tenant portal, we should eventually see a new task um, spinning off to deploy the new virtual machine. And as there in the service broker, you didn't have any option for the org VDC to kind of choose that was baked into the blueprint, I assume. Yeah, that, that's something um, I will uh, I will show in a second because that's okay. where the power of VRA comes in that you have a, a tagging mechanism and you can define policies based on either requirements for the blueprints or based on the user and uh, project or group allocation to which of these endpoints and resources they should be able to use. We will okay. see that in a, in a second. Um, yeah, so here we can see that um, there has been a new task trigger to compose a virtual machine. And that virtual machine now um, reflects like the deployment in Service Broker. It will take a while to uh, be deployed and yeah, now it's being uh, poured on. And once this task, task finishes, eventually the deployment will be um, successful in, in VRA. For the deployments, um, that will take a while because in, in VRA, the deployment um, is marked depending on the on the blueprint. Um, it needs some yeah, power cycle for the virtual machine. And then now you can see that the status is powered on and we can have a look at the details of the deployment itself, where you can see the topology. In this case, it's a super simple blueprint. So just a single virtual machine connected to a cloud network, to one of yeah. the routed network. And yeah, that from there, we can use the VRA functionality now to manage that virtual machine. So we can see in the general tab, there are certain, um, certain information about the virtual machine where it's actually, where it uh, landed actually. We can see the um, eventually once the operating, guest operating system is booted up with VMware tools, we will be able to see the um, IP address. We see the um, storage that is being used and um, the network connection for um, the virtual machine. And in VRA, there are also some second day operations available for the whole deployment. So that means um, change leases based on the um, lease configuration in VRLS automation, um, edit deployments, um, power cycle, and so on. And for the individual virtual machine, um, there's a bit more. You can create snapshots and resize um, the virtual machine. So add CPU memory or disk capacity. You can add an independent disk and um, again, yeah, power cycle the virtual machines. So that that um, uh, period of the request that was being granted by default for this machine, if you then say, I want to decommission the machine after five days or something like that, that, that action is going to call the Cloud Director APIs to do that. So those actions yeah. have been already built using the, uh, the valid mm -hmm. Cloud Director APIs. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's correct. And by the way, there, there is no um, alignment um, to like the, the uh, permissions or the lease mechanisms in, in Cloud Director. Yeah. That um, is all managed now by VRA. So it's assumed that VRA manages the virtual machine. You still, of course, see it in your um, org VDC. So you can see these Cloud Machine 1, which is based uh, the name in the, in the blueprint. 
um, you can see the virtual machines and they behave and act like regular virtual machines. So you can have full access um, to them through Cloud Director to access the console, to manage C network configurations and um, details of the virtual machine in VCD. But of course they are managed by um, VRA. So if you do any, um, I don't know if you delete the virtual machine here or power off the virtual machine, it might take some time and then um, VRA will pick up the new state. And of course you might break any relationships in, in VRA if you, I don't know, migrate yeah. to a different org VDC or so. <laughs> That's what I was going to ask you. So if I start make, making changes now in VCD to this this V app, then that's basically not going to. Yeah, that's I mean, it's not not recommended. Not recommended. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Things like power yeah. cycles or power operations or console access um, are right. no big problem. That uh, yeah. the um, inventory collection of VRA will just pick that up uh, within a, a few minutes. But of course, if you yeah change the network connection or delete. The virtual machine stuff like that, then um, it will eventually just flag in VRA. But that's um, on the other hand. In theory, yeah. the 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 tenant may not even have access to VCD in this respect. Yeah. That's correct. Yeah. So if you have um, in this case, you can use the different role based access control or realize automation to um, configure the access. So um, the nice thing about VRA is that uh, well, VRA is designed that end users, like IT consumers who do something with this Ubuntu VM, for example, um, they can use the VRA console and you have some very fine-grained permission control here, which of these different um, tasks and um, second day operations should be um, accessible for mm -hmm. the consumer user. And they don't have to care about where that virtual machine actually landed and where it runs. That's the idea of VR, having VRA as an abstraction layer of these different cloud resources. Yeah. And we will yeah. see that when we um, have a look at the, um, the, infrastructure, uh, the infrastructure where it's set up, um, that you can have, or the idea of VRA is that you build these blueprints in a cloud agnostic way, so it doesn't matter, or it can be provisioned in an on-prem vCenter in uh, perhaps one of the hyperscaler clouds or now with the new adapter in a VCT organization. But as an end so, user, I don't need to know that. Yeah, so the recommendation here would be kind of perhaps not to match VCD access to VRA drawing VCD in the same custom org VDC with yeah. mm -hmm. access because it, it could get a, uh, could get messy. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. right. And I, I think that applies and that, that's fine. It's just worth knowing that that's the way it should be. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Um, yeah. With that, let me switch over now. Um, service broker is like the um, service management and consumer um, application within the virtualized automation environment. Let's now switch over to cloud assembly, which is the way or the um, tool where you define the blueprints and configure the uh, the different endpoints for the deployments. And tell me, your I know VRA is also available as a SaaS solution, so. Mm -hmm. Do, do these um, these components, cloud assembly, service broker, do they work with the uh, adapter in the cloud versions as well? Um, the well, the components for uh, service broker and cloud assembly are the same in the SaaS yes. and we realize automation cloud. However, I think in the current version, the VCD endpoint is not yet available in the SaaS version. Okay, but that's something we are definitely looking into because that makes perfect sense for cloud yeah. service endpoints. Definitely, yeah. Okay, um, yeah, here in Cloud Assembly, first of all, we have a, a comparable deployment screen to manage the existing deployments, but the more interesting stuff happens in the design and the infrastructure um, tabs. So let's first move over to the infrastructure tab here and see how we can connect um, VRA to um, Cloud Director endpoint. Now that happens in the infrastructure tab um, down here in the Cloud account section with the connections. Um, we can see in my demo environment, I already set up one connection to a Cloud Director and one to an on-prem vCenter server. Mm -hmm. And if you add a new Cloud account here, that's where you define these different endpoints for the hyperscaler clouds. You can see AWS, Google, Azure platform um, for on-prem vSphere or Cloud Foundation. And of course, the an integration with um, VMC on AWS as well. Right. In my case, we want to use the VMware Cloud Director um, cloud account. And then um, that's where you add, um, yeah, the name, you give it a like a, a name to identify the um, 
cloud account. And I'm not going to do that because I already um, have set it up just to walk you through the wizard. For the URL, you would just get your um, cloud director tenant URL. Mm -hmm. And for username and password, that's your org admin credentials. Yeah. So again, important, the whole connector works in the tenant aspect, tenant space of um, Cloud Director. As a service provider, you don't need to um, do any special configuration. And then, um, yeah, once you're logged in, you can select the, um, the organization and then uh, the org VDCs. Let me show that in the ones that is already set What's up. What's the cap capability tags there? Yeah, we'll come to that in a second. Okay. <laughs> Very <laughs> sharp eye and good question. <laughs> Jump, jumping ahead. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, so here's the one that I set up with the URL. Um, the Cloud Director CC02 is the tenant name or organization name in Cloud Director. And in my case, I just selected two org VDCs for, um, that are available for deployment to provision new resources. Okay. Now, these capability tags. These are um, generic tags that are available for pretty much all the different objects in we realize automation and they can be used to influence the decision making in vra where um, certain blueprints should be deployed or where workloads should be deployed in a more generic way so um, typically you use these capabilities for resource providers like a cloud account here or later when we um, talk about the individual mappings for stor storage profiles, for example. You use the tags to um, identify different classes of endpoints or uniquely um, identify different endpoints. And then in the permission settings for the blueprints and for the projects, which is like the tenancy um, aspect in, in VRA to group different things, that's where you define um, which or where certain blueprints can land hope this makes sense. Yes, <laughs> so yeah, yeah, a, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's, it's a way, a, a very powerful, because it's a very generic way um, that allows very flexible to have um, different blueprints and different projects to deploy wherever we have free resources. I don't care um, to which one, but then you might have other projects where you, um, I don't know, definitely always want to land these uh, workloads to an on-prem vCenter server because they are not allowed to go to cloud provider, for example. Something like that. Yeah. Okay. That makes a lot of sense. Okay. Um, yeah. Once we set this up, the uh, inventory collection will come in. So there's a data collection that runs, um, I think, every 10 minutes. And then uh, once a day, there's some image um, synchronization. And then you can use um, this cloud endpoint as resources in VRA. So the image synchronization that's synchronizing the uh, app catalog. Yeah, from VCD, that's correct. Mm -hmm. And that's it's not, correct. not doing anything without Launchpad at this point. Or that's at correct as well. Yeah. At, right. um, well, <laughs> technically, App Launchpad um, creates a regular VCD catalog. <laughs> so in the libraries, I think I have App Launchpad activated for this yeah, one. You so do. You yeah, you did. Yeah, I saw that earlier. An AAP um, catalog. And th these catalogs item, items, they will show up in the image mappings as well but you ah. don't have any access to the different, well, um, nice single deployment features, single click deployment features of App Launchpad, because that's part oh, yeah. of the App Launchpad UI. Yeah, so like the uh, the options, small, medium, large, the yeah. t-shirt size in the networks mm -hmm. to connect. Yeah, that's, right. that's a different, um, different setup. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, once we set this up, um, we do have access or we see the different compute resources that are now available. My two org VDCs in, um, in Cloud Director and that single small uh, on-prem vCenter server that I um, have connected here as an endpoint. Um, we see for the networks, the uh, port groups with the on-prem vCenter or any NSX constructs if you connect it to an on-prem um, NSX V or NSX T manager. And we can see the org networks that are available in all these different organizations in um, Cloud Director. And then in the same way, we can see um, storage policies, for example, and data stores uh, from on-prem and the storage policies that we have in, in VCD. And with that, we can now start to map the different constructs. So um, Cloud Zones are like destinations for VRA 
deployments and they map to the organization VDCs. Typically, they get automatically created um, as soon as you connect to a VCD endpoint. And then you can have um, flavor mappings, which are the t-shirt sizes. So they map to either certain defined CPU and memory sizes in a vCenter case, or for Cloud Director, they pick up the sizing profiles. Um, that So the t-shirt size configuration that we have in uh, Cloud Director with that mechanism. Yep. Okay. For image mappings, that's where you map a generic image that can be used in a blueprint. So in my case, Ubuntu, for example, to uh, the templates. So to a template in vSphere, for example, if VRA decides based on tags or other mechanisms to deploy in vSphere, it would pick up the template that's defined here. So just a basic tiny Linux template set um, that's available here in the um, in the VCD uh, in the vCenter inventory and in um, VCD, that's where you select the um, VApp image from the uh, catalog item in Cloud Director. Got it. And here you could also, again, define some constraints, for example, that could be used then for tags based on the project definitions um, to influence which region and which image to um, the deployment mechanism of VRA should pick for the actual deployment of a, a blueprint. Yeah, then we have the network profiles. They map to the org networks. So you can define and select um, org networks um, for the network profiles. When you use these um, network objects in the blueprint, we'll see in a second. And again, you can define capability tags here for resource providers to influence the placement. And we have um, storage profiles, which are just sort of mapping to the storage profiles in uh, from VCD. What are these capability tags we're defining here? Can these be used cross-tenant? So if I wanted to create a, a uh, or use VRA as a tenant interface, but I wanted to kind of pull in some existing work I've done from another VRA instance or, you know. Um, well, they are globally visible in one VRA installation. So you can use them for uh, different well, projects is like the uh, grouping mechanism in VRA. Mm -hmm. And when with the configuration, um, you can define um, for these projects where um, they have some, yeah, which <laughs> where you define the, like the, the tax on the consumer side. And then yeah. VRA tries to do some uh, some matching. Now tell me, just just uh, it might be a stupid question, but um, you know, previously we had troubles with with or concerns with tenancy with VRA to VCD, and mm -hmm. now I, I think it's a lot more um, uh, specific to the you know the lockdown on which orcs you're going to be connecting to. Mm -hmm. Does that mean then effectively there's a um, using the existing VCD multi-tenancy constructs and then putting VRA as a, you know, a shim on top, it also allows VRA to become a multi-tenanted console? Yeah, um, it does not follow the complete multi-tenancy. So the role-based access control in VRA um, does not um, fully, for example, allow you to have role-based access control for individual cloud accounts. So um, that does work, or it would work if you use um, certain roles like the cloud administrator role who, in VRA, who's capable of adding these cloud accounts, they see, or they would be able to connect to all the different organizations. Yeah. And then yeah. you can use the tags again, um, and the projects and business groups in VRA to um, split that up, but there's no automatic synchronization. So as I mentioned in the, in the beginning, VCD does not influence any of the multi-tenancy or business groups constructs in VRA. And yeah. you would have to do, as a, a service provider, you really have to make sure um, to use proper role-based access control so that your tenants, for example, do not have access to this cloud account settings. Otherwise, yeah. they would be able to like see other tenant endpoints. Yeah, okay. But, that could be done with a kind of few 
like gotchas and watch out for you know yeah basically giving visibility across all connections <laughs> mm-hmm. okay it's it's likely likely easier or the more common way um to really have like in uh, to to follow the scenario that we are um, showing here with an uh, that mimics an on-prem dedicated VRA installation for one tenant mm-hmm. and then have the tenant full access to the cloud account because that access just gives them access to their tenant in VCD. And yeah. then they can, within the tenant, they can use the different business groups and role-based access control um, for consuming the resources. Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, yeah, that, that's. I was just kind of wondering on top of my head whether it could mm-hmm. be used, especially when you've got these uh, capabilities to do uh, the additional kind of metadata tagging and things like that, whether it could be used in a multi-tenant scenario. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the, the thing is that in, in VRA, a lot of um, the, um, yeah, the objects that you use, even if you don't have access them, to them during deployment, they are still visible. So when you define tags, for example, they are globally visible, which tags are defined and so on. And that's something um, which in VCD, <laughs> we do not have. <laughs> so in VCD, if I'm logged in with my tenant credentials, I do not know even the existing uh, existence of any other tenants and would never see any objects of other tenants yeah. through API or in the UI. And in BRA, um, since it's based on or uh, focused on, on enterprise customers, where you, of course, have separation and different business groups, but it's still possible to see like existing of other business groups because they're in the same enterprise and you know them anyway. <laughs> yeah. It'd be interesting okay. to see how this works out when uh, BRA... Um, for cloud, like the SaaS solution supports the adapter, mm-hmm. whether you could have multiple instances for multiple tenants connecting to a single you know, cloud director service or cloud director instance mm-hmm. um, and consume yeah, that, it that way. I mean, that likely um, will be possible because then it's different instances of virtualized automation yeah. and they connect to well different tenants in VCD. And if that's the same VCD, that's likely comparable if you have... <laughs> multiple instances connecting to AWS, <laughs> to the same yeah. region in AWS with different credentials, of course. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Okay. Uh, yeah, let's go back um, to the mappings. So we set up the flavor mappings, image mappings, and so on. And now we have all the components that are needed to define the blueprints. So I'm switching over to the design section here in Virilize Automation. And that's now where a service architect role in VRA would um, create blueprints, either based on um, some templates or existing blueprints, or just start from scratch with a blank mm-hmm. blueprint. And then you can share that with the different um, projects and also um, automatically publish it in the service broker if you want. And then in the blueprint, um, that's where on the left-hand side, you have the pad with the different um, objects or the blueprint that map to infrastructure resources. And then you can define these. And for the VCD um, adapter, the important one are really the cloud agnostic ones. So you would um, use the cloud agnostic virtual machine to drag and drop in there. And uh, for example, cloud agnostic network, which maps to in the infrastructure tab map to an org VDC network and volumes would map to um, named disks in VCD. So if you want to have some like persistent disks, um, it would be the named disk functionality in ECD that is used for the volume management or maps to volumes here in um, VRA. Okay. So the thing here is to use the cloud agnostic um, yeah. mm-hmm. assets rather than anything else. Okay. Mm-hmm. Exactly. So, um, and that that's the idea because these are cloud agnostic ones. Mm-hmm. They map to with the, all the mappings that we've seen in the infrastructure tab, they are generic enough to map to all the different endpoints. So that cloud agnostic blueprint can be deployed to an on-prem um, vCenter to either the hyper, or one of the hyperscaler endpoints or to a cloud director yeah. environment. And there are some specific ones in there as well for um, the other hyperscaler. So if you look at um, AWS, you have a lot of these additional AWS instances um, and functionality for Google, you have some for yeah. um, Azure, you have some. But um, once you use these specific ones, then you lose, of course, the multi-cloud aspect of that blueprint. 
and then you yeah. pretty much create a blueprint that is really specific to that one single endpoint. Okay. okay. Um, yeah, for the machines, you define the important aspects that are needed, which is mainly the image and the flavor for the deployment that we've um, mapped into the, inf in the infrastructure tab. And again, um, see the, um, we just have here the generic Ubuntu name. We do not map directly to any objects in the CD. That's yep. the point of that abstraction layer of, of VRA. And then um, for these, you can also, um, that's where the things come in, where you can have um, for the uh, properties, you can have some additional constraints where you now could use tags for, well, this virtual machine just, um, I don't know, <laughs> place it to an uh, uh, on-prem environment, for example, or yeah, uh, just use certain networks with certain capabilities when you do the... Um, well Will all those well. map to, through to VCD? Because I see those things like boot disk sizing and stuff like that. Would that you would have to have a, a mapping, wouldn't you, for that to work from a VCD standpoint, like an API to call? Um, to limit that? Yeah. So these these don't um, map through to the um, objects in in VCD mm. because um, we use and that that's why they are sort of in the additional properties. Yeah. For these properties, um, you might also, um, if you go too much into details, you might also like break the cloud agnostic aspect. Sure. Yeah. Of course. Okay. Um, yeah. You connect the. You can connect virtual machines to networks or define the um, connection to the networks. And in the network, you would again, um, yeah, currently we uh, support existing networks, so predefined networks. That's an important part, by the way. Um, where um, currently the first version of the adapter in VRA 8.6 does not do any network automation towards um, VCD in terms of creating new networks. But in the infrastructure tab, you use existing networks that are pre-configured in the org VDC with their services and load balancers and edge devices and um, yeah, flavors and um, functionality. So sorry, well, currently, yeah, that, that's fine from a design perspective. When you execute, though, that will then mm -hmm. challenge you for which network you want to attach it to. Um, no, that, that's uh, based on the in, on the network mappings. VRA knows to which network to connect the virtual machine, but for example, it does not configure any additional services on the edge gateway, or it does not create new um, org networks or vApp networks in okay. VCD. That's uh, currently not not possible. That's something we might look into um, fu the future to well, bring a lot of the powerful network self-service capabilities into the blueprints as well. But it opens up some yeah questions: how far this um, and which way this makes sense to really be um, cloud agnostic. Yeah. Yeah. Um, once you okay. define the blueprint, um, then you can um, save that and publish it. Use the version control export it to um, a YAML file or just deploy it directly from here. So from there, my job as a service ac architect would be complete. I can add additional machines, connect them to the networks and so on, and then publish this blueprint into the service broker catalog. And then that's um, where we come back, where we started for the end consumer really to use the service broker to deploy the blueprint. Awesome. Yeah, I, that's... Uh... That's pretty cool. I, I think there's there's a lot of value in in now having Cloud Director obviously as a as an endpoint from the different use cases we've discussed. And I think there's like you've demonstrated right. There's a really good um, I think mindset to get into in terms of the multi cloud and keeping those machines as agnostic as possible um, mm -hmm. to make sure you, you can adapt you know to whatever environment you need to run in. Yeah, and again as a service provider. Um, <laughs> this episode is a very nice to have if you are not interested in offering VRA as a service, <laughs> because um, if you run VCD and offer org VDCs to your tenants, you don't have to care about anything. Um, VRA on-prem at your customer will just use as an additional way to hopefully create a lot of virtual machines and consume a lot of your resources um, yeah. again. 
if you are interested, of course, um, to get more into VRA or yourself, then um, have a look at the, um, at the mappings and the role-based access control to really make sure to um, yeah, use VRA in the proper tenancy way that fits your business model. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, this, this, this will, for service providers who don't want to use VRA, this will just kind of make the meter spin faster and, and mm -hmm. generate more consumption. But also, I think yeah. it's a really interesting option for customers who aren't in a region where there's a hyperscaler. Uh, mm -hmm. and need public cloud services and they also want to manage their on-prem as well and they've got yep. an existing it team with vra already there um you know this for them is a nice way of having a public cloud service from your local service provider and tying it all in together to the same it operations that they run today mm -hmm. yeah absolutely so all the um value add and value proposition of vra of course still is true and even more now because we now also have uh, VCD or VDCs as an endpoint for the VRA multi cloud management capabilities. Yeah, yeah. Brilliant. Jörg, anything final to finish up on? Um, yeah, two more things, just mm -hmm. links that we um, uh, I want to share. First, um, we do have for the VRA um, documentation, there is one section about the, um, the cloud director endpoint in Virilize Automation that pretty much walks you through the same step that I've done um, in the demo. Just mm -hmm. make sure to um, read through that to um, yeah, understand if there are any restrictions in your environment and to uh, configure the proper um, setup for the different object mappings. And um, we also have one blog article that explains, again, pretty much what I've demonstrated in the last couple of minutes, how to um, configure the, uh, the VCD endpoint in VRA. Okay, I'll make sure they're both linked in the video. But Jörg, thank you very much for walking us around the, the VRA adapter. Uh, it's really cool to see this, and it's, it's been something that's been asked for, like I said at the beginning, right? It's yeah. been asked <laughs> for for many years. <laughs> I'm very happy um, to see it finally released. <laughs> yeah, brilliant. Thank you, Jörg. Take care. Okay, thanks. Bye-bye.